not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. The first steps I took in Destiny felt very much like shoes I've walked in before. In a sort of indicative yet comforting feeling, playing Destiny felt a lot like returning home. Home being a certain ring world we all set foot in a long time ago. There's no doubt that Bungie's massive multiplayer, er, shared world experience of Destiny will urge its players to recall the joyous moments of playing Bungie's previous monster success, Halo. And while Destiny does feel a lot like Halo, it most certainly takes great strides in separating itself from all that came before, and definitely paves a whole new and unique path all for itself. It should go without saying that the visual world of Destiny is eyeing, to say the least. It is a very pretty game. I played it for the PS4. It has some of the best visuals that the PS4 has produced to date. I often found myself taking it slow, and just finding a good place to sit and watch the sunset. It made it even better when a random player came and sat next to me, and without any form of communication, we just sat back, two players, enjoying the beautiful art of this game. Level design is linear, but always interesting. There is always cover when you might need it, and though linear, there always seems to be just enough room for you to enjoy your sparrow before getting from point A to B. The level designers have done a great job of tricking the player that this really is a wide open and expansive world. However, it's not. Once a player gets to the boundaries of the map, they quickly realize that this is a very linear space. Unfortunately, exploration will yield little reward. Sometimes a golden chest will pop up here and there around dark corners, but more often than not, you'll run into the dreaded turn back now notification. And if you're not back within the confines of the world within five seconds, you die. Perhaps the guardians killed you? Oh, that's right. That's a uh, wrong game. Never mind. If we could only go and explore the rest of it. The character design is as top notch as ever. The enemy models in particular are as well designed as any other Bungie game. They are both familiar yet special, and their design helps indicate to the player what kind of enemy they might be, and more importantly, what tactics might be needed in order to properly engage them. Maybe they are the slow, bulkish type, the agile and fierce, or maybe just the average grunt. In any case, the enemies that you will run into in Destiny are both great to look at and even funner to shoot at. The digital artists that contributed here are clearly at the top of their game. The sound design of Destiny should not go unmentioned. All the gun sounds are unique and interesting. The sound of gunshots kick with a real power. The alien roars are terrifying and are well suited for each class. The soundtrack is beautiful. When you're in a hectic firefight, those drums build up, the music swells, and it totally amps you to go guns a blazing. Once again, Martin O'Donnell has proven his creative genius. And the polish on this game shows, period. Destiny does two things right, its guns and its gameplay. I have not had this much fun in a shooter since Halo 3. The controls are tight and responsive, and precision aim is always rewarding. In Destiny, your goal is to grind your character to higher levels and gain experience to either buy or be rewarded new weapons and gear. The true reward here, though, is your weapon. You'll feel like you're wielding your very own Excalibur, tailored just for you. This is because Destiny offers a sort of level-up system for your gear as well as your character. By putting resources into certain gear and weapons, new and unique gameplay tweaks and advantages can be added to your arsenal. For instance, my Sidewinder shotgun, after putting in the necessary upgrades and resources, would allow me to deal extra damage for every kill I got with it. Likewise, my chest piece and gauntlets also tweaked the available ammo that my weapons would have by default, while my head piece allowed for a quicker melee cooldown. All of these adjustments made me feel like my character was uniquely mine and that I had weapons and attributes that no other player had. 
I'm sure you've noticed it by now. The one major drawback of this game is repetition. Where other MMOs offer variety in their questing, Destiny's approach is simple. Go here, shoot this, shoot more, go here, shoot that, shoot more, turn in quest, disregard text, thank me and give me my loot, go here again, shoot a little more. Now what? Again? Perhaps it's just the nature of the beast when you have an MMO FPS. The story quests or missions in an MMO FPS hybrid obviously are going to be all about shooting. Now, let's not forget that the grind of an MMO is not anything new here, and certainly pivotal to the overall structure of these kinds of games. It's how characters advance, get more powerful, and more importantly, get cooler loot. The silver lining is the enemy interactions. At higher difficulties, the AI really is a worthy adversary. Firefights can be both dynamic and tense. Destiny should be played at the higher difficulties, just as Halo was meant to be played on Heroic. There's nothing more rewarding than a good challenge that you were able to overcome on your own and by your own skill. This should, at the least, help to alleviate the woes of a painful level grind, something MMO players are far too familiar with. But in your grind, you may be surprised. There are random optional world events where other players might come and fight alongside you. You may find a hidden cave with high-level enemies, or even the interaction of the other players that drop in and out of your online and shared campaign. Like Journey, a PS3 exclusive, the social aspect here is special. With limited communications and no lobbies, any players that drop in your game can only communicate with simple hand gestures like waving and pointing. Or busting a move. These simple interactions can lead to unique social instances, and sometimes more is said in their actions than what would have been had their own voice been allowed to come through the speakers. Just like Journey, these experiences can sometimes create a kind of social bond between players where communications are limited. This is something special in Destiny, and I for one am glad that voice chat was not implemented in normal gameplay. In Destiny, for me at least, silence is golden. But there are fun ways to gain experience as well, like in The Crucible. I have not been as immersed or allured in competitive multiplayer since the days of Halo. Not even Titanfall felt this good or balanced. Destiny is truly the breath of fresh air that modern shooters needed. It's not as easy as turning a corner and mowing down a character with automatic fire. No. There's dodging, evading, jumping, running, and sneaking. And just a general sense of skill-based competition. The wild card in Destiny's multiplayer is the super abilities of the players. It might make you think twice about engaging that lone hunter who might be wielding the Blade Dancer spec, but that's the fun about Destiny. You never know. That very same hunter might turn around and go Super Saiyan on you, whip out his golden gun, and kill you with his one-hit kill hand cannon. The multiplayer here is not only fun, but it is a great alternative to leveling up your character and a total optional part of Destiny. In a lot of ways, it feels like Destiny is almost being two full games in one package. Well, Bungie gave us Halo, a very special shooter that had a killer story to go along with it. With every sequel that was released, I for one waited in retail lines being unable to contain my excitement for the story of Halo. Sure, the multiplayer was awesome enough, I should know, since my late teens were primarily spent in front of a cheap CRT, screaming at my friends for screen watching. But the story that Bungie has already proven is very competent at telling is unfortunately, and very sadly, absent from Destiny. Now before I continue, it is clear that this is a 10 year venture for the studio. To have included the epic climactic final battle where destinies and revelations strike in awe of the player in this act one of Destiny would have been foolish. I hope that they still have something grand for us later down the line, just as World of Warcraft was able to tell in its ongoing story with its later expansions. However, my professional judgments need to call it as it is. On the surface, Destiny's story is lackluster. I was already 13 levels into the game and I still didn't know who the ghost was and why he revived my dead corpse in the middle of nowhere. Then I thought, well, I must be special. There's a bunch of dead corpses reanimated here. Uh, 
we are all supposed to be the hero of our own story. But there are so many other players playing that one story can't be followed. No one is special in this open shared world. In Destiny, it feels as if there is no clear importance ever placed on the story. There are no optional events to get deeper into the lore. What is the lore? What is the Traveler? Why does it need Guardian? What is the darkness and why do I have to fight? Who are all these characters in the tower and why can I only express myself with waving and dancing? Urgh! Of course, this information can be found online, but we're playing a video game and that kind of information is supposed to be there in the experience for the player. You could go halfway into the game and never even really know why you're shooting these cool looking aliens. You might stop and think, wait, why am I doing this? Then a long range laser shot might interrupt your thought process, zoom past your head and make you say, well, f it, I have a big gun and there's a bunch of you running around. Mm. Oh well. So no, Destiny's story as it is now doesn't leave much left to the imagination, primarily and aggravatingly because it does so little to explain anything in the first place. But hey, the guns are cool. Destiny is a finely polished game. It's clear that no expenses were spared in building the world of Destiny. There are some minor and simple things missing, like a group teleport system in dungeons, when a player might get lost and is left behind. Or when players drop out of strike missions, you can sometimes be left waiting for new players that might not ever come. It's almost always better to just quit and start over with a new fire team and a fresh start. A trade system in Destiny would have also helped the social interaction of players and friends. Maybe in the future, an auction house could be implemented for those who were unlucky enough to come across rare loot for themselves. Some might refer to Destiny as a sort of casual MMO. Some of the features like drop in and out gameplay are really casual friendly. That's not a bad thing. However, personal and account wide loot drops are what many World of Warcraft players consider to be what killed the hardcore aspect of vanilla WoW. The same reasoning may also apply in this case for Destiny. And that's the problem, really. Destiny suffers a bit of an identity crisis. It isn't the familiar and easy Twitch shooter that console gamers have become accustomed to. It also isn't the deep and immersive MMO world that the hardcore expects. And because there's no dedication to a hardcore MMO experience or a more core-driven console shooter, Destiny suffers from being the jack of all trades and the master of none. It's interesting that Bungie never acknowledged this game as an MMO. Most MMOs carry the connotation that their game requires a major time-consuming investment. By Bungie referring to this game as a shared world shooter, the MMO stigma is dropped for console gamers. But this really is its own experience. And to simply refer to it as a Borderlands, Halo, World of Warcraft, Mass Effect mashup does not do Destiny justice. The game is legitimately fun, even if the story might not all be there. The fact that Bungie is still able to make a very fun gaming experience, albeit one with a muted and bland story, is an a credit to Bungie's talent at making video games. But only time will tell if Bungie and Activision can expand on Destiny's lore. They clearly plan to support this game and expand upon it over the next 10 years. Players can only hope the expansion content Bungie plans will extend Destiny's lifespan. Either way, from what we have here, Destiny earns its $60 price tag and will give all next-gen players the true experience we have all been waiting and yearning for. If you can accept the fact that Destiny is neither quite an MMO or exactly a single-player FPS, and can accept this new IP as a unique experience all of its own, then you can enjoy Destiny at face value. And without any preconceived notions or expectations of the genre, Destiny is fun. At its core, in a traditional sense, does a video game need to be anything else? This might actually be something revolutionary all of its own. It can be whatever it wants to be. Because the quality is there. Screen Watcher is giving Destiny an 8 out of 10. <laughs>